today I'm going to do a kit build. Um, at a train show a while back, I got two of these old MDC roundhouse structure kits. It's kit number 503, two-story brick building. If your Google Foo's better than mine, then have at it, because I couldn't find much more than a couple of passing mentions of these things on the interwebs, which means that they are even older than I thought. I'm guessing that these are probably, yeah, 70s vintage, or at least the castings are. So inside the box, well, first of all, uh, I got them for a buck a kit. So, and the fact that they're old and used, well, not used, but you know, pre-owned, um, and actually they came originally from a store that hasn't existed for probably 20 years, the Golden Spike at the Forks Market in Winnipeg, run by my buddies Ian and Zenon, uh, or he's back then it was, um, but yeah, it's definitely a history piece. So. Uh, these two copies of the kit, uh, and the reason I got them, well, besides that they're cheap, um, I figured it's an old kit that's been kicking around in somebody else's basement, so probably there's parts missing from one of them or the other one. This one's got instructions in it, so that's the one that we'll start with. Um, and just figure out what we need and what we've got for parts. So, I'll, uh, the instructions are fairly straightforward. They assume... I think that you've built stuff before, but these aren't, you know, super high end kits, even for their day. Um, they're good, but they're not awesome. Uh, so one thing you notice right away, it's got this kind of white schmoo on here. Uh, according to some, you know, not a blog post, a forum post that I saw, that is theoretically factory weathering. Um, we'll see. I may not even leave them brick color. I may see if I can clean that off or touch it up or whatever, but that's for later. Uh, right now I'll just go through. There's a bunch of walls. There's some railings for up to there, some window castings. And actually those are fairly fine mullions on those windows. I like them. Um, what is this? That looks like tar paper roof um, okay and actually that's the full length where's a short wall here okay so that hmm it's got two roofs okay uh, what are those guys let's see. oh the shutters there's still shutters for the windows okay Oh yeah, uh, you can see them on the sides of the windows there. Okay, that's what those are. Three sprues of that set of doors. Lots of these steel shutters. Wait a minute. I have four long walls. I have Eight short walls. Is there two kits in this one box? Oh, wow. Yeah, I've got two of these sidewalky things. Um, that's actually, oh, that's the boardwalk that goes around the, uh, the upper deck there, I think. Yeah, that goes all the way around. Okay. Uh, well, three sides anyway, sort of the stairs. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I got two bases. Okay, so this is this looks for all the world like it's two kits in one box. Yeah, another sprue of those. What oh, are shutters? Shutters. Cornices. Wow. There's the shutters with the chimneys on it. Oh, it does have two chimneys. I've seen two of those in a kit, but there's two more down. Okay. Oh, and there's another set of instructions. Okay. Wow. So I'm going to go through this and 
sorted out into enough pieces to build one of these, I think. And I'll get back to you shortly. Okay, so here's what we ended up with. Um, you've got four different long walls. You've got three different types of short walls. Um, and two pieces of each of those. And then four of these short blank walls. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six sprues of the windows and doors. Two sprues of windows three sprues of railings, uh, four long and four short of the cornice pieces, a whole bunch of steel shutters, two bases, two porchy balcony things, and two roofs. Okay. So, when I'm building a structure kit, anything that needs to be sort of squared up, I like to work on a surface that uh, that is that I know is dead flat, and my cutting mat is anything but that. Just the heat from soldering and stuff's warped it. So, one thing a lot of the old timers suggest is to use a piece of glass. I'm not going to do that because that's crazy reflective for the camera. But I do have this piece of ceramic tile left over from when I did my bathroom, and it is dead flat everywhere ah don't spill my coffee Let's see there's no air gaps underneath the ruler so that's perfect that will let me square the thing up when i'm building it and i'll use my machinist squares to hold the wall square when i'm uh, gluing them uh, i'll put those back out of the way so I guess let's get a rockin' and rollin' here. So there is okay. So the there's a boardwalk goes on the bottom. I didn't see a boardwalk. Well, that's part of that porch, that upper porch thing. Huh. Oh, it looks like it's separate. So we'll do it later. There's the building base. There's the four walls of the basement. Or of the main, the, the base floor there. And then the balcony molding. Um, the balconies themselves. A little staircase that drops off the edge there. Did you see a staircase? I didn't see a staircase. Don't worry about that later. Um, and the second floor goes on. There's a porch roof. Hmm. Didn't see a porch roof in there either. Okay. So there's. Oh wait a minute. There's some stuff in the middle of that balcony sprue. No. Yeah, well, well, we'll figure it out. Those those go on near the end anyway. The main parts are here, and you don't need to have those, I guess. Uh. Please read the instructions carefully and follow the drawings before starting. When gluing, use only styrene plastic glue. The left side is that one, and the right side is this one. Now, these corners are mitered. And just looking along, there's a little bit of flash on some of these. So I'm just going to grab, grab my knife and Clean that flash off the top edges. Give them a bit of a scrape just to get that weathering kind of paint of theirs off. Notice I'm scraping with the back edge of the knife just so that I'm not taking very much off. Just a little tiny bit. And then in those bevels, I think I'm just going to touch them up just ever so slightly with a file. 
just to clean the crud off them. I'm just feeling this. I don't have a, oh, I suppose I do have a bevel gauge around here somewhere, but I'm too easy to go and find. I can just do this by, by feel. Okay, so what did we say? That's the back. That's the front and that's the bottom of the front. So as I mentioned, one of the reasons for using something ceramic or glass on the bottom here is that it's flat. The other reason is so that the glue doesn't stick to it. I'm just meeting these up. Do it by feel. The bottom should grab pretty soon, I'm hoping. And actually just do that to hold it. And I'll put I've got these little ball magnets here. And I'll just put one of those behind there. That should hold that nice and vertical. Actually, I'll put a strip of that down there at the bottom. Run this into the corner. Put a little bit. So this super thin modeling cement. Uh, one of the features of it is being so thin, it wicks down into these gaps. And it is a cement, not a glue, which means that it's solvent based. So it actually slightly dissolves the plastic and then when it evaporates the dissolved plastic sticks together and sticks back to itself. And also, if you need to loosen it up a little bit to move something around, re-wet it and it remelts, then you can shove it back in. Now I'll just let that glue dry for a few minutes here. That's dried, now we'll put the next in. So the reason I'm putting the front and sides on first and the back on last is because that's what you're going to see. Um, assuming this thing's facing the aisle. If you're going to, if you're building this to face away from the tracks or away from the aisle, then obviously you want to focus your attention more on the, on the back rather than the front. But this one I think is going to face, uh, face the aisle, so I'm going to put this side together, get those front sides matching the best first. So these little ball magnets, I don't even remember where I salvaged them from. I have a sneaking suspicion that they were actually the magnets at the bottom of a shower curtain from a dollar store from a long, a long time ago. But they really just come in handy. So I'm just touching the brush up the inside of that seam and letting it wick in. And now we wait again. It doesn't take too long, it's only a couple of minutes, but get those magnets up off of there. And now this guy's a little bit of the plastic and solvent has oozed out onto the bottom there. You can see there's a little bit of crazing on the bottom there. That doesn't matter though, it's easy to take off. It's just, I said it doesn't stick, it doesn't glue itself in. If I was working right on my cutting mat, that would be stuck there permanently now. That's already hard to the touch. So let's see how well wall number four is going to fit onto there. Beautiful. So again, I'm just going to put some along the bottom just to set the foot of that wall in. Now there's a, a possibility that these old castings might be a little bit bent 
from all their time in that box. Uh, well, let's square up. Not quite. That's not perfectly square. You can see that little gap in there? So I'm just not going to bother with that for now. I'm just going to hold it. Whip some of that into the corner. And just hold it long enough for it to set. That's not a big deal. Do the same thing over at this end. You've got to make sure that when you're doing this, you don't let your fingers get wetted with the solvent because you don't want to leave fingerprints in the brickwork. I think I'm just going to let that hold by itself. So I didn't get very much glue into either of those corners, just enough to kind of hold it. And I'm sure that there's a little bit of, yeah, so... Okay, so it's not perfect. You can see I've got a little bit of a gap down at the bottom there. But I can hold it closed. And as I was doing that, I saw a little bit of the liquid cement that was still there wick down into the bottom. And I just hold it for 10 or 15 seconds and ta-da, look at that. It's melted itself together. Now then, this one futz around a little bit more at the top. Just to get it perfect. I'll put a little bit more of that in there. And again, that'll soften up anything that's already started to harden. And then I can just sort of hold it, keeping my fingers back from the wet solvent. And there we go. And come back here and just finish up this corner. All right, that looks pretty good so far. A little bit of a mismatch in the back corner. But like I said, you want that in the back, not the front, right? So while that was drying, I actually read the instructions. And the instructions say the first thing to do is attach the windows and doors. Okay, fine. I'll attach the windows and doors. So there's the windows, there's some doors. Clean up the flashing a little bit on this, including from the side that I cut. Maybe just even that out a little bit. There's multiple ways to do this, which is this one. Yes, it is. Okay. So you can install it that way with the trim facing out. Or I suppose you could set it that way with the trim facing in. If you wanted the brick molding near the brick to trim the door out. But then you've got the injection molding pin marks you see there in the corners. So I think but the problem with doing it on the outside here is you see that little standing course of brick on the bottom that hides that detail I don't know yeah, I have lots of these kits it will make some each way this is the first one now then if I was decided on what my paint colors were you know like an organized person would be then I would have pre-painted all of these before I glued them in so that I wouldn't have to dick around with masking. I'm not going to do that because I still don't really know what I'm going to use for paint colors yet. But anyway, I'm just going to carry on with this. I'm just going to dry fit them for now and I'll glue them in a bit.
And around back we haven't... Uh, what have I done? Ah! I used the upper windows on the back. <laughs> oh well. I'm officially kit bashing now. So that's uh, U2 windows, which out of the windows are... placed except for that one that just kept falling out okay now then I guess I should probably glue these guys in I think what I'm going to do is just run this around the edge there and drop this guy in and Maybe put a bit of weight on them, just to make sure the dries flat. I'm not sure. We'll see in a minute. Okay, so I think I'm just going to put, just now that I can get at the back here, put a little touch in the corner and let it wick around. Again, I'm working from the side that nobody's going to see. So if I do smear any details that are back there, it's not going to affect anything on the front. But I am going to weight that back down again to hold it in place. Actually, I came up with a slightly different way of doing these, which I used on the front while the camera was paused. But I'll do this on the side here. So since I've got a nice flat surface down here that the glue doesn't really stick to, I'll just do this from the back with those sitting in their position and just sort of wick it into the corners. It'll travel around and throw a little bit of weight on it from behind. And there it is. When they pop off, or when I pop it off, they'll be all nice and in place like the ones in the front are. And there we go. The uh, now that the glue is dried on the front, on the side, and all the way around, we can take a peek here. I think that looks pretty good for the first four. So now, we'll go on to the second four. It means putting in the balcony piece. Which literally just sits in there. Just sits inside. Perfect, right there. There's the balcony for the beginning of the second floor. Now then, the second floor on the front was supposed to have those four windows. But since I screwed up, I don't have that. So my options are either use the what was supposed to be the back for the front. It gives me a couple of small windows and oh, one small window is bricked over. That's kind of cool. Or I can use the piece that's supposed to be the back of the second floor. So this is supposed to be the back of the second floor. This is supposed to be the back of the first floor. Or I could actually just make this into a single story building and then have pieces left over. Hmm, that's intriguing. So for that, I would put those pieces on and 
Where's this cornice go? This cornice goes on like that. Hmm. That's the thing when you're building these plastic kits. You can look at them just as a kit to build exactly how the manufacturer intended. Or you can kit bash. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Because if I kit bash this, then that leaves me with a bunch of extra walls. Uh, this balcony, which I can turn into boardwalk sidewalk out front. Um, a bunch of really cool railings. And do I want to put the shutters on? I think I might put the shutters on the windows on the back. Yeah, I think I'll do that. An evolving project. That's kind of where they're supposed to go. I'm not... I'm not 100% sure if I like that aesthetic. Because it's not a really common thing having steel storm shutters in this part of the world. In the part of the world I'm modeling, which is kind of in my own backyard, more or less, kind of, sort of. Um, for reference, Canadian prairies, 1970s. Um, and I don't remember seeing when I was, what was that, when I was 12, whatever, I don't remember seeing a lot of buildings, a lot of brick buildings with steel shutters on them. Hmm. I think I might do this on the back of the building only, not on the front. Um, well, I'll, I'll put them on, glue them on, and see what happens. Um, is that if they're on the back of the building and I don't like them, I'll just leave it to the side where I'm not going to see it anyway. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. No, I don't think I want them on the rest of the building. I think they just go on the back where nobody can see them. Okay, next up, roof. The roof is molded in two parts. You will find four moldings designed as corners and two long... Two. The cornice is good. Okay, so the instructions want you to attach the cornice to the roof before you attach it. Right, I can do that. Yeah, which piece is going to be the front? So that just sits down inside. See this little uh, recess or rabbit or whatever you want to call. That just sits right on there. Okay, so... Those just glue on there. And there's three pieces all meeting nicely in the corner. And actually, I think I'll just give them a dab of glue up at the front. Again, this is the underside, so I can be a little bit generous with the glue. And I'll just gently sneak this back piece in, being careful not to let my fingers get into the glue puddles. That's pretty tight. Okay, time has passed, the glue has dried, I've had something to eat. And this is stuck down, but that's not a big deal. And yes, it has caused a little bit of grief up there, but that's okay. We can straighten that out. Now then, the big question, will that fit on there? Almost a perfect fit. What's wrong? There. Just have to convince it a little bit. There. That's snapped into place. That's good. Now then, I think I will just give it a touch of glue from the inside. I don't have to flood it. But just 
a little bit on each of the corners or each of the sides and then we go and wait for glue to dry again is that soaked through no it hasn't so we'll just let that sit and come back when that glue is dried okay well that's pretty much dried now so one thing i've noticed is zoom in actually here this corner doesn't meet as well as it should so i'm gonna spin that around this way so i can get at it easier i'm gonna touch it up with uh some modeling putty this particular one is squadron brand green putty it's really common in the uh, plastic modeling circles uh, there i squeezed out way too much of it onto my little board here and i'm just using i don't know some kind of a dental tool that i got uh in a an assortment of dental tools from princess auto uh, americans will probably find something similar at Harbor Freight because it's a very similar kind of a store. Now, so this corner here has just a little tiny bit of an overbite on it. Let's get back into the light and zoom in instead. It's got a little bit of an overbite on that corner, but that's easily dealt with. This way. Filing it flat. And then we take a look down on this side and it looks pretty good on there, so I'm not going to mess with it too much. I'll just check all the other corners. Just flatten them up. I'm not too worried about whitening these up. Oh, that's that corner. Okay. I'm not too worried about discoloring it because I'm pretty sure I'm going to paint that cornice. I'm not going to paint it, paint this thing in this video, partly because I don't know, I don't have any ideas of what colors to paint it. Um, I'm not sure how far I'm going to go. And this video is probably going to be long enough anyway. Um, so the plans suggest that the smoke jack and smoke jack base go on the end with the blank walls. That makes a certain amount of sense, I guess. You wouldn't install something like that right in front of a door, would you? I'd best check if there's an obvious place that they intended for this going, to go on the roof doesn't seem to be so I think I'll put it over there and just line up that that uh, rivet line with the seam in the roof that seem reasonable Okay, even more time has passed. This squadron putty has led time to set up. So I'm just going to clean it up a little bit like that. Like that. But for this large flat on top, I'm going to use this little tool that I made. It's just like a tongue depressor sized stick from the craft store slash dollar store with some sandpaper. In this case, 600 grit, just glued onto it with a bit of spray glue. And what that does is it gives me a large surface that's relatively flat. And just clean the top of that up. Another option, had I been thinking ahead, I could have just stuck that 600 grit down here before I glued that on, flipped it over and just skated it around like that, but whatever this works just fine I'll just knock all the high spots off any glue spots from before anything else just make it nice and smooth it's uh not worried about that white discoloration from me sanding because as i said i am going to paint this eventually in a future video Stay tuned, subscribe, etc. Um, sorry, it's, YouTube is infecting my brain. Um, 
yeah, but I am going to uh, to paint this in a future video once I decide what color it should be. And as we all know, since I think I've mentioned it enough times on the channel, I am somewhat color blind, so deciding what color to paint things is not an easy decision for me. I'm going to have to spend some time out in the real world and looking at pictures of the area that I'm modeling from the era that I'm modeling it and then see what I like, see if I can determine what color it actually is, consult with my daughter because she actually is good at that, um, and then get back to it. You know, one more thing I think I'm going to do. I think I'm going to take part of this walkway, which was originally supposed to be the walkway between the first and second floors, right? The balcony. I think I'm going to take it and cut a piece out of it and make a front boardwalk sidewalk for this thing. Now, to do that, I will use my modeling saw here. And I'll just guide it up against that. To keep me straight. I'll just cut right through that. I probably should be doing this down onto the cutting mat, but whatever. But there's that, and I did get a little bit off there anyway, so I'll try be more accurate on this side, or if anything, air the other direction. Okay, that's that done. So this is an Exacto brand saw. Um, there's other modeling saws you can get. This is an Atlas one. Um, it comes from Atlas Model Railroading. And there's probably other brands you can get too, but that that made quick work of this, didn't it? Uh, and then for these pieces inside, I'll just do them like I was doing the sprues on the other ones and just quickly chop those off with multiple swipes there we go and that piece knock it off like that a little bit of file action just to flatten it out nudge that into place eyeball this And just step away. Just leave it to dry. It'll be fine. So there we go. Hmm. Actually, that brick with that white pseudo weathering stuff that they put on there from the factory. That's not horrible. I mean, it's not great. But, uh... Something that did happen to a lot of buildings of this age as they came into the more modern age is they got painted. They just got like roller painted with some neutral beige or whatever god awful color the owner wanted. So I might do that too. And yeah, I need to look up color schemes and consult with somebody who can actually see colors properly. But there you go. There is just a quick little kit build of a neat little building. A little bit of freelancing, a little bit of decisions made on the fly. Let's call them kit bashing if you want. But there it is. Well, for those of you who stuck around to the end, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Um, this was never intended to be a how-to. Most of my videos aren't. Or a tortura to tutorial or anything like that it's just yeah you guys watching over my shoulder seeing what i'm doing um you might find something interesting in it i hope um those of you who are models uh maybe you saw something saw me doing something that uh that you thought hey i can do that too that's great um as always if anybody has any comments or questions uh please throw them down in the comment section below 
I'm going to do a bit more searching, and if I can find any reference on this model at all, on this kit, I'm going to throw that into the description box. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. I will talk to you later.